how Angola will look like by 2030. Angola is a country in southern Africa with a diverse landscape that includes sub-Saharan desert that stretches into Namibia, warm Atlantic beaches, and a maze-like network of rivers. The Fortaleza de São Miguel, a castle constructed by the Portuguese in 1576 to defend the capital, Luanda, and other notable buildings in the nation bear witness to the colonial history of the region. The government has made diversifying Angola's economy away from its reliance on oil income a top objective. Angola is now constructing projects worth more than $22 billion, while another $40 billion is in the planning stages. Over the following 10 years, Angola's population will increase by more than 36% from its present 34 million to 46 million. As oil prices fell in 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 epidemic, Angola was severely impacted. The government's top objective right now is to diversify the economy and reduce its dependency on oil. Less than 45% of Angolans have dependable access to electricity. The government of Angola wants to expand the power infrastructure to encourage economic diversification, as evidenced by the fact that two of the top five projects there are energy-related. Angola has a backlog of projects worth more than $62 billion, of which $22 billion is now being built. Hello there, I am James your host, and you are on to Africa Reloaded. In today's video, we shall be exploring the beautiful nation of Angola to discover the projects that the nation is embarking on in order to achieve greatness by 2030. Keep it locked down and remain connected as we make this trip. Kakulo Kabao Hydroelectric Power Station Work is currently being done on the 2172 gigawatt Kakulo Kabala Hydroelectric Power Station in Angola. When finished, it will surpass the 2070 gigawatt Laka Hydroelectric Power Station, the country's largest power plant as of July 2017. With help from the state-owned Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, ICBC, the power plant's chosen contractor, China Gizhuba Group Company Limited, started building in August 2017. 2,172 megawatts of generation capacity are planned for Kakulo Kabana, which will be used in Angola and exported to nations in the Southern African Power Pool. At least 80 months are anticipated to pass during construction. The commercial commissioning of this power station was anticipated to occur in 2024, according to a report from the Angola Press News Agency in October 2019. A reservoir lake with a length of 16.3 kilometers and a surface area of 16.6 square kilometers will be created by the main dam, which will be 103 meters high and 553 meters wide at its crest. MCA Solar Project 950 Megawatt MCA, a Portuguese organization established in 1998, has completed two photovoltaic parks in the Angolan provinces of Biopio and Ba Farda. About 1.8 million people will receive the 285 megawatts, megawatt power, of installed capacity, which will provide green electricity. MCA oversaw the engineering, procurement, and construction EPC, phase of the project's implementation and is a member of the International Consortium in charge of its development. The two parks are a part of Angola's National Development Plan for the years 2018 to 2022, which calls for diversifying the nation's energy sources. The photovoltaic plant in Biopio, Catambela Municipality, is the largest solar energy project in Angola and Sub-Saharan Africa. Its anticipated installed capacity of 189 megawatts, megawatt power, or enough electricity to power more than a million consumers, is the largest solar energy project in the region. There are over 509,000 solar panels in the park. Nearly 261,000 solar panels make up the second plant, Ba Farda, which has 96 megawatt power, and will add energy to the national grid for nearly 500,000 users. The facilities are a part of a group of seven that should be operational by the end of the year and have a combined capacity of 370 megawatt power. They are located in the provinces of Benguela, Huambo, Baia, London Nort in Lucapa, Lundasol in Surimo, and Moxico in Luena. 
Together, they will supply 2.4 million people with green and healthy electricity. The Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, of the United Nations will significantly benefit from this project's implementation. By removing the need to use roughly 215 million liters of diesel a year for generators and heat production, it will enable an annual reduction of pollutant emissions of nearly 1 million tons of carbon dioxide, resulting in a significant reduction in the nation's imports. Xenia Phase 2 Project about 150 kilometers off the coast of Angola, in Block 17, is where the Zinia 2 Deepwater Offshore Project is located. It is the first of numerous satellite projects envisioned to maximize the block's output. Block 17's sole concessionaire and owner is Sun Angol. Total exploration and production, Angola, 40%, Operator, Equinor, 23.33%, ExxonMobil, 20%, and BP, 16.67%, all share ownership of the block. In May 2018, Total and the remaining field partners made a final investment decision about the field's development. An estimated $1.2 billion will need to be invested in the project. About 40,000 barrels of oil will be produced each day by the satellite field. In total, the Zinnia 2 field spans over 600 square kilometers. Nine production wells will be drilled as part of the field's development plan in water between 600 and 1,200 meters deep. The oil produced in the field will be delivered to the pass floor floating storage, production, and off-floating FPSO vessel via a network of flow lines. As part of the project, 36 kilometers of flow lines and 21 kilometers of umbilicals will be built. Officially, the offshore work was supposed to start in 2020. Cayo Deepwater Port Angola's northern Cabinda region is home to the harbor known as Cayo Deepwater Port, which is still under construction. The 2015 started building project was put on hold for two years, but after a $124 million debt settlement with the contracting companies, it was resumed in January 2020. The 1,130 meter dock at the Cayo Deepwater Port, which will be 16 meters deep, may berth up to four ships simultaneously. Additionally, the port will be able to transport around 60 containers every hour. Over 2,500 hectares will be covered by the project. Aldina de Lomba, the provincial governor, and Brian Fuggle, the chief executive officer of Cayo Port, were present when the first phase of construction for the deepwater port of Cabinda was recently inaugurated in the village of Cayo Littoral. According to Brian, the Frank Africa Company has been entrusted with the early stages of the Deepwater Port of Cabinda project. This company will mobilize European equipment to drill 20 to 60 holes that are 35 meters deep. Additionally, the business will give crucial information for the port's foundation, a geotechnical barge, and a platform of modular self-lifts with a lift system for drilling the ocean floor. All of this work is anticipated to be finished in 8 to 10 weeks. Brian said that the building of the deepwater port of Cabinda was consistent with the government of Angola's ambitions for rebuilding the country's infrastructure. When finished, it will contribute to the economic growth of the Cabinda province and the entire nation. The deepwater port of Cabinda will be built in three phases, each of which is meticulously planned to guarantee that the port has little risk to the community and the environment while having long-lasting effects. A total of 1,000 direct employment will be generated and additional jobs will be created as a result of the port's development's impact on business growth. Cabinda Refinery Project The Malembo Plain in Angola's Cabinda province is the site of the Cabinda oil refinery's construction. Its installed capacity for crude oil is 60,000 barrels per day. The refinery's gradual construction is a component of Angola's National Development Plan, which will aid in that nation's goal of producing energy on its own while reducing the importation of refined goods and raising exports with larger margins. For domestic use, the refinery will generate aviation fuel, diesel, gasoline, and naphtha. Sunerf, a division of Sunangol, Angola's state-owned oil business, and Gemcorp Capital, a private investment management firm, 
will work together to create the country's new refinery. In June 2019, the Angolan government signed an agreement for the construction of the Cabinda refinery with a group led by United Shine. Later that year, however, the agreement was terminated since the consortium did not uphold its obligations under it. A total of 2,000 local residents will benefit directly and indirectly from the project. The oil refinery will eventually strengthen the local economy and employ only Angolans. Despite unstable power supplies and bad roads, which each held back growth by 0.2 percentage points, infrastructure contributed a net contribution of about 1 percentage point to Angola's improved per capita growth performance in recent years. Angola's annual growth might increase by around 2.9 percentage points if its infrastructure was improved to the level of the region's middle-income nations. If you enjoyed this video, do well to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Africa Reloaded for more exciting adventures. Also turn on the notification bell to get alerts of our newly posted videos.